Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at a new workflow that allows you to edit video starting maybe on your mobile device, on your iPhone, your iPad, and then continue working on the video on the desktop in the full-blown Premiere Pro uh, CC for uh, 2014. So in this case, I'm starting off on the iPhone. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I was in Detroit and I went out, I went down to Cobo Hall and I shot the uh, shot some video of the North American International Auto Show. And I thought I'd put together kind of a cool video or quick, maybe not cool, but a quick video to show on social media of some of the things I saw down there, some of the cool cars, concepts, whole nine yards. And um, I thought, well, since I shot the video with my phone, why not start the process there? So let's do that. I'm gonna go ahead and open up my Adobe folder. I'm here on my iPhone 6 Plus. And we're going to go ahead and just simply go to the brand new Adobe Premiere Clip. It's a free download on the App Store. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and launch Clip. And I've already, um, here, let me go back. I've already kind of started the process with an existing video. This is the one we're going to finish up in. But since we're new to Clip, we're going to go ahead and take a look at um, this as if we had never looked at it before, which on this show we haven't. And therefore, we can kind of get the ins and out of what Premiere Clip's all about and how it works with Creative Cloud. So I'm gonna start a new project. We're gonna come back to this one as it's kind of already got a lot of the work done. Uh, we'll use that one to finish up, but let's go ahead and create a brand new product project. And we're gonna call this um, North America International Auto Show um, Demo. We'll just use the word demo for this one so we know which one's which. All right, and we'll say done, and we'll um, that'll basically now it's waiting for us to tap to add media to start our project. So this is media that could be on your phone. It could be videos or photos. It could be media that we can grab from other sources like Creative Cloud, or you could just create a new title. So let's say I wanted a new title right off the bat. Uh, when I bring up the titler, I can say that uh, whatever text I want, Let's bring up the keyboard here, and I'm going to say, uh, we're going to spell it out, North America International, and we'll do Auto Show. All right, so we got our title done, and we'll just say done there. And there's our title, and that's the first thing. If we were to go, um, if we were to go back, that's the first thing in our video. So now it's a five-second title. We can tap on it. We can um, click on it here. We can say no, no, no. I don't want it to be a full five seconds. I want to uh, shrink it down. Now it's only three seconds. So you have editing control right there on the title you just put in. Next thing, of course, we want something a little bit more than a title, so let's tap the plus sign in the lower right-hand corner. When we tap the plus sign, that's where we can go get the other media. So things you shot with the phone, things you're gonna shoot right now using the camera, uh, files that you may have stored on Creative Cloud that you wanna use. So I'm gonna go ahead and say on my phone, and then it gives me the choice. Do you wanna look at the, fo the photos on your phone, maybe on your camera roll and di different albums, or do you wanna look at the videos on your phone? I want videos. And um, again, I have uh, a couple of albums. I'm gonna go ahead and tap on the um, video album. Now from here, again, there's some videos that are already edited, already done, but I'm gonna go ahead and just say that I wanna grab, uh, just for this one, I wanna grab the, as I was driving up to, the passenger was recording, not me, driving up to the uh, Cobo Center. Uh, as I'm passing by the Cobo Center, here's a nice Corvette video. Um, I think that's a Ferrari video, and here's some muscle car Ford videos, and we'll just start with those for now. We'll add those six in. Now, once we add those six in, those are now um, referenced inside of Premiere Clip. Notice it happened very quickly because it's just referencing them right off the phone. Now, at this point, if I wanted to, I could pick up and rearrange the order just by drag and drop, rearrange the order of the cars. I kind of like them the way they were, so I'll keep that order there. And um, I also get the ability, you can see the time for each one. Well, the first one was a minute and 13 seconds. Do I really need a whole minute of driving up to Kobo? And the answer is no. So if I tap that, I can uh, scrub through it. I can see where's maybe a good spot to start. 
maybe as we're getting closer to downtown, maybe right about there. And then I can trim right to that spot. And I can say, you know what? That's all that video needs to be is 17 seconds. Doesn't, you know, probably doesn't even need to be that long, but at least we went from a minute down to 17. And the rule that I'll keep giving you throughout all of any type of video editing is that shorter is always better. I know I can go on forever when I'm doing tutorials, but time and time again, studies have shown that if you got a shorter video with a lot of punch, a lot of action happening right away, people are more apt to watch it than a long video showing every little detail that most people will tune out on after a few minutes. So try and keep your videos as short as possible. Now, while we're here on this clip, the next thing you can do is you can tap and you can uh, adjust the quality of the clip. So for example, I have the exposure. If, I, if it was too dark, too light, I can adjust the exposure. I can adjust the highlights and shadows, which I'm very familiar with this setting uh, from working with products like Lightroom and Photoshop and Camera Raw. And then on the right hand side, you see three other things. So for example, if I, um, for example, don't want the audio from driving, uh, then I can turn the audio off or I can turn on or smart volumes on by default. So I could say, um, you know, if someone starts talking in another part of the video, this, the audio from this will drop down. So you can have, uh, or I'm sorry, this will drop the music down uh, in the background from the person talking here. I can have the audio fade in, fade out. So you have uh, all kinds of cool audio controls there. Now you have the ability to also slow down a clip. You can drop it and make it go slow motion just by using your, your slider there. And uh, last but not least, the bottom we can, I believe is duplicate the clip. Uh, yes, we can duplicate it or split it at the playhead because maybe you want to repeat parts of that clip throughout different little pieces of it so you can quickly duplicate it there uh, so let's go ahead and go back um, the next thing i want to do is i just remember it here i do want to do one thing on the title i want to go in and let's see here there we go i could change the text color or the background color ah, we'll leave it as this i think it's pretty good okay we'll leave it as this all right, the next thing, uh, and then you just keep repeating that process. So if you want to insert something in, you can insert it in anywhere along the way. You can rearrange the clips. You can tap on a clip. You can, um, again, control where that clip is going to start, where it's going to stop. I kind of like it starting maybe right about there. So we'll trim to there. And then uh, as I go by kind of gets crazy and the person holding the camera is kind of dipping in and out there. So I'm going to go ahead and just scrub to that. All right. So that's all the, that's all of that clip we need. Now, again, I can go through each clip doing that, turning off the audio um, for each clip because we're going to have background music, whatever I want to do. Now, speaking of music, where can I get some music? Let's go in and we'll tap our um, music button and I have a choice of getting music off my device. In other words, if I have music that I, songs and iTunes, whatever, um, yes, we will let you do that. But here's the caveat. If I go grab a, a popular song off iTunes or in my, um, the one that I ripped from CDs or whatever on my device, I don't necessarily have the license. I probably don't have the license or rights to use that audio in a video that I'm going to post online. So a lot of sites, we even just block the video. They won't even let you post it because they know unless you can prove you have the rights to that cool song that you used in your video, they won't let you do it. So that's why Premiere Clip has themes that you can work on. So if I go to themes, uh, these are royalty free songs that you can place in your video if you don't already have songs that are royalty free or you have the rights to to place in your video. So for example, uh, here we can play Ben. Bend is the one I really like. That's the one we're going to use. Kind of got a cool, you know, slow start and then it picks up. Here, we can turn up the volume in case you're not hearing that. There we go. All right, so I can say, yeah, I want to use that one. I can play some of the other ones. And that's cool if you're telling a nice story, but not cool for our auto show. Auto show. I like Knockout is another one. Okay, got a nice beat to it. But again, uh, once you pick the one you want, I want to use Ben. I can just hit add and that will add it to my um, story. So if I wanted to see my story so far, I can go back to the beginning and I can just hit the play button down at the bottom. 
So I hear my music playing. I hear the music from that uh, driving here. Let's go ahead and fix that. And let's go to audio on that one. And let's say, don't play the audio for that one. Go back. And we probably want to do it for each one of these. Don't play the audio. Go back. Don't play the audio. Go back. And okay, so we got the audio off on those three. Let's go back to the beginning, try it again. So it just jumps to each one. So far, so good. Seventeen seconds is a long time, folks. This one's twelve seconds. And audio still on that one. But you get the idea. So even when we're watching that, 17 seconds felt like it was forever while we we're driving. Cut that down to maybe five seconds, two seconds, three seconds. People get the idea. You're driving. You're headed downtown. They see the buildings downtown. Yep, that's where you're going. That's all you need. You don't need the whole 17 seconds of, of riding. All right, so a couple more things while we're here. Uh, we have the little magic thing here where we can actually, I'm sorry, I didn't show you the button. At the very top, next to the music note, we have the little magic wand there, and we can um, fade some finishing touches here. We can change the look of the video. So if you ever watch motion pictures or movies in theaters, a, a lot of attention to detail. There are people that are professionally getting paid to do just the color of the video because coloring of the video sets the mood. So if you wanted to control that, you have all kinds of presets for your LUTs or your lookup tables here uh, that will give you cool looks to your video depending on the kind of message you're trying to portray. So dreams or film-like or glacier or martial, so warmer themes or punchier themes. So let's say I want to use punch. Um, that will be my theme for this. I can also have the video fade up from black and fade out from black. Now, there's also a cross fade between clips. I don't necessarily do it with video, but for photos, I could certainly see where you're transitioning from photo to photo, and you kind of want that cross fade transition there. All right, so now, um, here's the thing. You'll notice in the... Uh, You'll, you'll notice that there's a sync icon right next to the um, music note, to the left of it. All while we were working, from the minute we created this project and we told it to import um, things into uh, Premiere Clip, it started uploading or syncing that data to your Creative Cloud account. So your project, if I tap on it, it says right now this project is synced. So that means if I bring up my other devices, whether it's another iPhone, iPad, or anything running Premiere Clip that I'm signed into with my Adobe ID, I'll have access to that same project and I can continue working. So for example, let's head over to the iPad. Let me uh, grab it over here, let me pull it over. And now that I pull the iPad onto the screen, you can see that we have the original project, the 2015 North American International Auto Show, but then if we scroll a little bit to the right, we've got the demo project. I didn't have to do anything but just simply launch Premiere Clip on my iPad. My iPad immediately started syncing that project down, and I can now tap on it on the bigger screen of the iPad and keep working. I have all the same controls, but a nice bigger screen, especially for my bigger fingers. It's easier to do my trimming, and I can do any work that I want to do here and continue the process. So for example, that uh, 17 seconds here that was a little bit still too long, let's go ahead and trim that down some more. Um, yeah, we don't need all of that. Don't need all of that. Let's here. Let's get it down to, yeah, five, six seconds tops. All right, so now that trimming has happened, um, I can get out of this clip. There we go. All right, and you see the you might see the little sync icon happen uh, right here where the little dots start going across. That means it's syncing it with Creative Cloud. So if I go back to my um, go back to my 
phone, you'll see on the phone that it's already made that edit. Even if the phone wasn't open, the next time I launch Premiere Clip on the phone, it would start syncing that project down with all my changes. So no matter which device I'm on, start on the phone, which is where I captured, uh, or I captured the um, videos to begin with, and then continue the process over on the iPad, and then go back to the phone if I wanted to. But of course, that's not what we're really that's not really the workflow that I would use. I mean, I would go from the phone to the iPad, probably wouldn't go back to the phone at that point because everything was captured. I'm editing on the iPad with a bigger screen. I'm done. So at this point, let's say my video is done. What are my choices? Well, if I tap on the share button in the upper right hand corner, or by the way, if I wanted to play the whole thing, I can go to the full screen, which is all the way in the upper right hand corner, play the video, and you get the idea pretty cool all right so now let's stop it let's say we're happy now there's a share sheet in the upper right hand corner the little arrow pointing up if i tap that now here are my choices i can save the edited video to my camera roll that's the first thing people wanted and that option was recently added to premiere clip um i can just save it right to my camera roll i don't have to do anything else and it's a video edited to do whatever i want to do with whatever you could do with videos on your device or i could publish and share it if i do publish and share what that will do this option here what that will do is it will upload the finished version of creative cloud and then it will give me a link and give me some options to share it on social media and so forth and so on but here's the one that we're going to do which is edit in Premiere Pro. Because as great as Premiere Clip is, Premiere Pro can just do so much more. You have the whole power of your computer versus a mobile device. So what I wanna do is I wanna tap edit in Premiere Pro. It'll take a second to sync up, to create a project file that Premiere Pro can open and sync that project file up to Creative Cloud so that I can access it. So it's showing me in my Creative Cloud uh, um, syncing that a, a, a folder's been added, or two folders been added, files have been added. It's doing the process in the background. So let's go ahead and let that finish, and then we'll head over to Premiere Pro to work on it. All right, so the edit's done, the project's synced. I'm done with my mobile devices. Matter of fact, my phone just went to sleep. So we'll go ahead and move the phone off screen will move the iPad off screen because now it's time to go work in Premiere Pro. I've got Premiere Pro on the desktop already launched, but it's just sitting there on the welcome screen waiting for me to do something. I'm gonna go ahead and say create a new project. And again, I'm gonna call this project North America International Auto Show, International Auto Show, uh, 2015, and I can put this anywhere I want. So let's uh, go ahead and just put it, um, let's browse and find a spot to put it. Let's put it on the desktop in a new folder called 2015 North America International Auto Show. And yes, I reversed the year, I know. Let's go ahead and do that and um, choose where it's gonna go and click OK. So that will create the folder out on the desktop, click OK, it will then bring up the Premiere Pro window with, um, again, it'll just be an empty window because it doesn't know anything about what we've been doing in Premiere Clip at this point. So now that I've got this empty window, I'm gonna to go to my um, project bin, and it says import files to start. So what does that mean? Well, what I wanna do is I wanna import, and I'll show you what it just gave us. If I were to go to my um, Creative Cloud files folder, there is a, there's now a new Adobe Premiere Clip export folder that's what got sent over from the iPad or the iPhone now at this point I can go ahead and open that folder up and I see my demo project that we just worked on so what would be in there would be the XML file that Premiere is going to convert to a project and all the media all the movies the audio track everything you need to keep working now I told you that we had I had already started one that's got a lot more work done to it and a lot more media in it so rather than having to wait for all that to sync, I'm gonna. Uh, I already did that ahead of time. You kind of saw the editing process on the on the devices. Now let's go ahead and finish that project. 
So what I'm going to do is open up, same thing, I got the XML file and all the media, lots more media than we had in the other one. I'm just going to go ahead and import this one. Now what it, what it will do is it will import it all, which is basically just linking to it all on the uh, desktop. It will convert that XML file to an actual project file, or a, um, a sequence file or sequence inside Premiere and put it all in a bin. So at this point, here's my bin. I just double clicked on it. I can go ahead and park the bin down here if I want. Let's do it this way. And now that I've got this bin, what's in here? Well, we can make the, uh, let's scroll down. I've got all the audio, all the video, including the project. So if I were to open up the project, there's the project. And at this point, I can hit play. Now, I don't, and this one I didn't have the title. So it won't have a title, but I can hit play. And it'll play that for a few seconds. It'll jump to the next clip. Here's the audio track. And by the way, let me change my, uh, my preference here. I just want to change the preferences for one thing for the audio hardware because it's playing, trying to play out of the laptop speakers. And I want it to play out of my uh, external speakers. So let's do that. There we go. Now, we have everything in Premiere. We can do anything we want. We can go in, we can rearrange these clips, we can trim them more, we can do anything we want. We can add more professional titles, add things from After Effects. We have it all here, ready to go. But there's something I can do in Premiere as far as the editing goes. I, I, could, I could be done here. I could do a few more tweaks here, add a title and be done. Or I could kick it up a notch because I'm in Premiere Pro on the desktop and do something that I can't do on the mobile devices. And what I love to do with these kind of quick you know, overviews of, of showing something that I saw, like the auto show, is I, I like to do it to the music. I like to do it to the beat of the song. So let's go in and let's do this. Instead, let's take any clip, let's, like for example, let's take this one, and let's right click on it and let's simply say, that we want to get a new sequence. We want a new timeline from this clip. And that will do, that'll do it. It just gave us a new timeline with that one clip on it next to the existing project. So you're not losing anything. You can always go back to this one, your safety net. If you don't like the experiment, you can come back to this one where you're safe. But let's experiment for a minute. Let's come here. Let's get rid of that one clip for now. And let's just simply go find the audio because we have that nice audio track. And let's put the audio track on the audio track. There it is. Okay. Now, before we worry about anything else, let's put some beat markers down. Let's go in and I put down one at the very beginning. Now I'm going to have this, I'm going to hit play. And as the audio is playing, let's see which finger can I do it. I'm gonna, every time you see me do this, that means I'm pressing the letter M for marker on my keyboard. And that will put a marker on, on the timeline just like it did here. So here's the marker. I want to put more down, but I want to put them down as I hear specific beats. So I'm going to let the intro play for a few seconds. And then you're going to see me do this as I'm putting beats down. So space bar. I think you got to hit uh, extra key there so it went back a little bit. But we got all our markers in. And all we need is just simply enough markers for the content. Because then we can trim the rest. We don't need the whole audio clip to play. We just need enough markers, which I think I added it up was like 20 markers um, to put, because we only have 20 clips to put down. All right, so now that we've done that, 
The next thing I want to do is kind of rearrange them in the order. Unfortunately, it did them in reverse order. So I want to, uh, here, let's tear this bin off again. And we'll just float it here. And we're going to go ahead, and that way we have a little bit more room we can rearrange. All right, so uh, I want to take the driving piece and move it up. Put that at the beginning. I want to take the drive-by sequence, put it next. Oops, let's pick it up, move it over. Okay, and then I want to do some more rearranging. Uh, let's put the Ford one uh, up there. We'll go get the Chevy one. And let's see, we'll put the Chevy one right there. And we're just rearranging these, getting them in the order we want. Um, let's go back. Actually, I want that Ford one to play before the Chevy one, just because it goes with the other Ford one. And we have the Dodge one we'll keep there. And then we've got the Mercedes concept car. We'll move that one up. And uh, we got the BMW one. We'll move that one over. Uh, here's another Mercedes one we'll put in front. So I'm kind of getting them in the order that I want them to play back in very quickly. Then we got another concept one over there. And we got the electric cars. The Actually, we'll put that before the BMW. And that. And then... I think that's going to be pretty much it. All right, I've got them in the order I want them in now. So I'm going to go ahead and select everything from the beginning of the video down to the last video before that other extra um, uh, timeline. So that should show that I've got uh, somewhere it shows I've got 20 out of the 23 things selected. And as long as I've got 20 markers, we're good to go. So the next thing we want to do, and last thing we want to do, is there is an Automate to Sequence button right at the bottom of any of your project windows or bins. So I want to automate having Premiere Pro lay these clips out, or stills, or whatever we had, out on the timeline that came over from my mobile device. And I could, again, I could use the editing, but I'd rather do it to the music. So let's go ahead and do this. We want to do it in selection order. We want them at the unnumbered markers, we want to ignore the audio, because I don't want the audio from these. That was the problem we had in Premiere Clip. It was bringing over all this audio. Don't care about that audio. And I want to ignore the audio and just have it play to my song. So it's all set and ready to go. Selection order, unnumbered marker, ignore audio, and go. There we go. So we have our long intro. And we ran out of media, but you get the idea. I had more uh, clips than I had uh, media. But at that point, we have now basically taken uh, something that was kind of okay to watch and made it much more interesting by timing it to the beat. Because we give people a taste of the auto show without them having to you know, sit there and watch 30 seconds of this car, and 50 seconds of that car. And next thing you know, they're not watching your video anymore. All right, so uh, how would we finish this up? Well, we would do two things. We would go to the end where we ran out of media. That's the end. And we could um, just simply shrink this audio down to fit or get it close to it. We can fade the audio in and out um, with effects. So we have the audio um, transitions, cross fade. Uh, so I like the exponential fade. We can drop that on the end of it. So that will fade our audio out. And we could also fade the audio in if we want it. But usually the song itself is already fading up. Uh, the only other thing we might do is at the very beginning of this, we might hit Command D to put a um, cross dissolve in at the beginning so that it fades up. And then last but not least, we probably want to put a title in. So let's go up to Premiere Pro. Since we didn't do this one, we could have done the title in Premiere Clip. But this particular project, I forgot to do it on. So let's do a new title. Uh, we'll call it Intro. Click OK. 
and that will even show us a preview of the clip that the time marker just happened to be sitting on. We can go ahead and drag out a text frame and we can say north, not in that font though. Let's grab a different font. Uh, let's go get something that looks a little bit more standard. There we go. North American International Auto Show 2015 Detroit. And again, you can change that to whatever font we want. It's in a light font right now, which usually is not good for video. Let's do a heavier font. There we go. We can make it whatever color we wanted as well. So if you wanted to make that a different color, just click color, but you get the idea. So we have our title. We can go ahead and just simply close it. It will add that title to the project bin, and now we can just drag it right on top of our video. Now that's another thing. You can't do that in clip. Uh, titles in clip are before or after a clip. They're not, they can't be superimposed on top. So that might be another reason why you'd come back to Premiere Pro to do some more editing. Uh, so now, last but not least, let's uh, fade that title in and out so it just doesn't pop on and pop off. We're just going to select the clip. Yeah, we're going to select the clip, hit Command D or Control D on Windows. That will put a crossfade on the beginning and the end. And here's what our video looks like now. Uh, we can go tilde. All right, you got it. So that's it for this episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White again. And, oh, my name is Terry White, not again. Terry White. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one. Hope you take advantage of all this goodness as a Creative Cloud member. Go grab Premiere Clip for your iPhone and iPad. Start the process there with capturing all the video, kind of getting it arranged the way you want. Uh, do your trimming right there on the phone or the iPad. And then if you need to do more, you can sync that project right over to Premiere Pro on the desktop, not lose anything, and keep right on working. Or you could just export it, a finished video, right on your device and share it. That's it. Take care and we'll catch you on the next one.